Boy, has it been some time since I sat down and shared with you my brutally honest experience and opinion about working in product management at a big tech company. So if that is what you are interested in, if you are exploring that path for yourself, then this video is for you. I'm going to share my experience growing my product career at some relatively large, hyper-growing tech companies over the last seven to eight years. I'll share what I like, what I didn't like, some things that may just not be obvious from the outside, but most importantly, I want to share with you five considerations that you need to really think about when it comes to deciding whether a big tech environment is right for you and your product career. In short, my recommendation to you is that you should focus on developing a product portfolio career. Do not focus too much on whether you should go down the big tech route or the startup route or this industry or this role or this title. Don't focus on that. Please try and get as much variety as you possibly can. Build a product portfolio. So a little bit about my career journey. I thought it would be really important to share what I have done, who I am. Hello, I'm Anika, by the way. I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. Not always so sunny, but today we are having an absolutely beautiful autumn day. Um, besides the point, uh, I wanna sh share my career journey with you because context is incredibly important. Every role, every team, every industry, every company, and to some extent, your, your country and where you work is going to make such a big difference to the experience that you have. By and large, I have had the most positive experience working in big tech but it's very important to take what i say with a grain of salt because ultimately your experience is going to depend so much on all those things what team you work on what kind of product you work on who you work with and who you report to right that is so important and who your manager is can completely shape the experience that you have where you are located. So starting with that, I have never worked in the Silicon Valley bubble. The majority of my career has been based out of Australia. I have spent a bit of time working in Canada and working for a Canadian company. But regardless of where I worked, I've always collaborated with and worked very closely with people based out of San Francisco and Silicon Valley. So far, my career spans just over 10 years, maybe, maybe even 12, which I think I'm in a bit of denial about. But eight out of those 12-ish years have been at large tech companies. Specifically, I have worked at three big companies. One was founded and based out of Canada. One was founded in Denmark and headquartered out of Silicon Valley, but I worked in Australia. And one was actually founded in New Zealand. Eventually, the headquarters moved to Denver, Colorado, but I worked in the New Zealand office, but again, had exposure to working with all sorts of global teams. Out of those eight years, five and a half years, I have worked in a very traditional, typical product management role. And in my last most recent product role at a big tech company, I went from being a product manager looking after one product to being the group product manager looking after a portfolio of products and managing a team of senior PMs. And while the companies I have worked at have definitely been big tech companies, they have not been big to the scale and size of your Facebooks, Googles, and Amazon. So keep that in mind again, because I think that size and scale is again, a totally different experience that I cannot talk to. Now, if you take away one thing from this video, let it be that you do not need to overthink your next career move. You do not need to get too analytical and overthinky about big tech versus not big tech, okay? In the grand scheme of your career, the most important thing will be the variety of your product experience. So I highly recommend that you focus on building a product management portfolio career because the best way to develop your PM toolkit and your PM craft is to get exposed to as many different problems, products, people, stakeholders, trade-offs, priorities, everything that you possibly can. What are your career aspirations? What stage of life and what stage of career are you in? What are you looking to learn? What is most important to you right now? Because it's definitely true that the experience you will get working in a big tech company versus a startup is going to be vastly different. If you know that you are in a stage of life where compensation and lifestyle is really important to you, that you are saving for a house or you are having a family, yeah, compensation is going to be incredibly important. And we know that big tech companies typically compensate quite well and startups can be a bit more risky. But maybe you are in the early stages of your career and you are 
mostly focused on learning and setting yourself up in the best way you can. Maybe you want to work in a startup because you want to have your own business one day. But right now you have other life commitments, which means you probably can't work the demanding hours that a startup life requires sometimes, which is totally fine. So you can go to a big tech company and you can learn how things operate at scale to prepare yourself for a day where you can venture out and go on your own. But with all that being said, let's get into the first consideration for working in product management in big tech. Consideration number one is impact, scale, and innovation. Now, chances are, if you are working in a large tech company, you will be working on a product that is used by thousands, if not tens and thousands and millions of customers slash users. Operating at such a large scale makes for really interesting problems and decisions and designs. How does your engineering team make sure that your services scale when you are operating with hundreds and thousands of users? How do you work with your customer success team to enable them and make sure that they are able to take on all the demand that might come on them with as many customers and users as you might have. And you as a product manager are going to have to make sure you're making the best possible decision for such a large customer base. How are you going to enable and support all of your cross-functional teams to make sure your thousands, if not tens and thousands of customers are able to use the product in the best way they possibly can? As a product manager in a large tech company, you might be owning a very small piece of a particular product. But that particular feature could be used by, again, huge amounts of users. So the impact is actually enormous, even though you are only looking at a tiny piece of the pie. Now, scale and innovation is all exciting when it comes to big tech, but obviously these companies need to be very careful about how they manage their risk. At a big tech company, you have to go through a lot of loopholes to make sure that new technology new ideas, new processes, even sometimes new products and features that you are introducing. So that can slow down innovation or it can impact innovation. Security concerns are often a really big part of what a large tech company can and cannot do. Now let's compare that to a startup. A startup can move pretty quickly, is usually quite a high risk tolerance, not always, it obviously depends, but usually. And a startup can really truly innovate. They can adopt new technologies pretty rapidly. And that's typically what gives a startup the advantage is the speed at which they can move and experiment, listen to customers, pivot, all in real time. But of course, startups don't come with that size and scale. Sometimes as a startup, you might be building something for one customer or a very small number of customers. And you don't even know for sure if anyone is going to use that. And if you do that for long enough and you build and you ship things that no one ends up using, it's obviously not a fantastic feeling that you spent so much time and effort going into something that wasn't really used. Now, of course, it's important to make sure you can find product market fit. But really what I'm trying to compare here is building a product that has so much scale and you know is going to be used and is going to have immense impact versus building something technologically quite advanced and exciting and innovative, but isn't actually as impactful when you put it out into the market. The other interesting way in which startups are forced to innovate is because resourcing is often quite scarce. So when you don't have the luxury of people and money and resources, you are forced to innovate and get really creative with how you solve problems. So that's a really interesting way to think about how a startup might approach innovation and how you might do things that are different and new and exciting. Consideration number two is your product manager toolkit. Now, working in a big tech company, especially one that is product-led, will give you access to hopefully a relatively mature product organization and product team. This means that you hopefully have access to people you can learn from, resources that you can leverage, access to tools and people that can allow you to do your best work as a product manager. Most likely in a big tech company environment, you are not going to be the only product manager. You are going to be supported by a team of lots of other product managers. That means that there will be set ways of doing things, hopefully ways that can be improved and changed with your feedback, but you're not going in completely blind. 
that you have someone to learn from. See how other PMs, especially ones more experienced than you, are navigating really complex and challenging product scenarios. A lot of big tech companies will also have budgets available for you to go and access external training or buy additional resources that you need in order to develop yourself as a product manager. Some examples of how I leveraged a learning and development budget at the companies I worked at is I got a Reforge membership. I did an AWS fundamentals course. I attended a couple of other product conferences where I got to connect with a lot of other product managers. I got a chance to speak at a conference myself, the Atlassian Summit, and that was supported by my company. Aside from learning and development at a big tech company, if you have other product managers who are working alongside you, you can soundboard ideas off them. You can discuss trade-offs with them. The benefits of working with other product people is endless. Sometimes it's really daunting to be the only product manager or the first product manager in any kind of company or team. So for that reason, big tech companies are really great because they're going to offer you that support network and they're going to offer you additional tools and resources for you to actually learn the product craft well. The other way in which a big tech company can help to develop your PM toolkit is because you often will be looking after a smaller piece of the big pie. And that means you can really focus on getting your fundamental product manager skills right. I think it's really important to focus on building a strong foundation because your product management foundation is really what's going to make the rest of your product management career easier. If you don't get the fundamentals right, then I think the rest of it can be really difficult. So by having a really narrow focus for your product area in a big tech company environment, it means you can really laser focus yourself on the PM skills needed to make the best decisions for that product. Oftentimes you will have other resources in cross-functional teams that you can work with. So you probably have a product designer that you work with. You probably have a product marketing manager that you work with. So while it's really important, of course, for a product manager to understand how all of those things work, when you're just starting out, it's really important and fantastic if you can just focus on the core principles of what it means to actually manage a product. Now, on the flip side, working in product at a startup can often mean that you are just thrown into the deep end and you just need to figure it out. And in many ways, I think that is a fantastic way to learn, but it depends on you. It depends on what is your learning style. Are you a more structured person? And do you prefer to learn by doing slowly over time? Do you prefer to learn by accessing resources and seeing how other people do things? Or would you rather just be given a problem and figure it out, right? Again, it's going to be so dependent on you and depending on what you are like, which situation you might really thrive in. But in a startup, while it's great to have all the responsibility and accountability and often a lot of autonomy to make all the decisions you need to, it can also be difficult because you have to do everything. And it means you can't really focus on getting your fundamental product skills right because you are trying to do it all. And that, and it can be really difficult to be doing all of that while you are just really focused on trying to develop the right skill set to be a good product manager. We are back outside for consideration number three, which is all about career growth, learning and development. But at a big tech company, there are tried and tested pathways for advancing in your product career. This is a good and bad thing. The good thing is the expectations are kind of set. You can almost see what your trajectory will be if you continue to stay at that company or if you continue to stay in that sort of world. Now, the downside of this, which you won't be surprised about, and it's not particular to big tech, is that in all big companies, in all corporates, you don't have that much influence over whether you do or do not get to grow in that career path. So much of it comes down to politics. So much of it comes down to budgets and so much other bullshit like that, really. Um, career growth is also about exposure that you get to the products that you work on. Maybe you got to work on a really high profile, top priority product launch. Maybe it was AI related in the last 12 months. That can do wonders for your career, regardless of what level you are at. It's about the story you tell uh, about 
your contribution to launching that product. Big product launches at big tech companies can come with a lot of benefit for your career. If you just have the opportunity to work on that one really impactful, high priority product launch, then that could do you really well for the next step in your career. For me personally, I feel very fortunate for the way my career path played out in all of the tech companies I have worked at, but it doesn't mean I always got to work on the things I wanted to work on. Many times, for many years, I worked on products that were very boring, products that were not used by a lot of customers. I was fortunate in that they were products that were really impactful to the customers who did use them, but I never worked on anything that was a super top priority. But I was fortunate to work in a group that was small when I joined and fast growing. And that was very helpful for my career. So, so much of this is about timing, growth, and uh, honestly, a little bit of luck. So if you now contrast that to working in a startup, your career path might not be as clearly laid out. But if you are in a smaller team, and if you are the first or only product manager, that might naturally lead you to a place where you become the head of product. But then compare that to the fact that you might not actually be compensated that well because you're a startup, you have limited runway, you probably have a limited life. So again, it's gonna come back down to where you are in your career and in your life. Consideration number four is about being a cog in a machine and one that I am very passionate about and actually is the reason that I ultimately stopped working in big tech. As I mentioned, you likely are going to be owning a very small piece of the pie when you work in such a large organization with big, complex products. And yes, there are some pros to that depending on what you are looking for. But ultimately, I think it comes back to the fact that, yeah, you are 120,000% replaceable and that day to day, you are kind of working on stuff that isn't that impactful. And if you are getting something out of that experience, like learning how to be a good PM, then that is fantastic. Or if you are getting compensation that is really important to you at the time because it's helping you in other aspects of your life, that is amazing. But purely thinking about the contribution and mean and meaning of what you are working on when you are working on a tiny piece of the pie and you are one of thousands and thousands, if not like Amazon, 50,000, 100,000 people, you are a cog in a wheel and you don't really matter. For me in big tech, it just started to feel like over time I was working on things that weren't that impactful and I was just doing things for the sake of doing them. I was spending less time shipping product and building product, which is what I enjoy doing, and more time in admin tasks and getting things over the line and presenting updates to stakeholders and designing roadmaps in slide decks. I wasn't building product. I wasn't solving problems and shipping them to customers. Another thing I struggled with working in big tech is that, to be honest, customer feedback was not always listened to. And there is a place for a company to prioritize their business and strategic direction over a customer request. But so many times I was involved in situations where we had outstanding amount of feedback for us to do something with a product that simply was overrided by a VP or an executive. If you don't have the autonomy and influence to really impact that decision, why are you even there in the first place? And last but not least, being a cog in a machine can be quite challenging when you are individually quite creative and possibly even a bit entrepreneurial at heart, like myself. So over time, I felt like I had almost become part of this cult, which a lot of tech companies do kind of feel like cults. They have such strong and dominant cultures that it kind of ends up overtaking who you are as an individual if you are not careful. And I feel like group thinking is very big in big tech. And I got to a point where it was really hard for me to be myself because I always felt like I had to do what the company would do. And when you don't have autonomy of making the best decisions for your product and for your team, as someone who is creative and as someone who likes to solve problems and actually build and ship product, 
I really felt like the startup life was better for me because I actually get to do those things versus doing all of the things that actually take away from my creativity in terms of approvals, getting buy-in from people, doing admin and all that crap that really just does come with working in a big company. If you are like me and you're creative, you're entrepreneurial, you love solving problems, you like just figuring stuff out, maybe big tech wouldn't be for you. So on the flip side, in a startup, if you are like me, you might thrive because there's less structure. You can kind of figure stuff out as you go. You can actually solve real problems for real customers. And in fact, that is your priority in a startup because that is what's going to help you survive. And that is what's going to help you get money in the door. So you don't have the luxury of doing things that other people tell you to do. You can only really do what is most important and solve the problems that are at hand. And so going back to the idea of having a product career for, for portfolio is when you go out and you try different things and you pro- possibly don't stay at one place for too long, it's going to keep your thinking sharp. It's going to keep your thinking creative and unique. Because when you are surrounded by the same people, the same industry, the same products, the way processes and and the way in which things are done, it's going to really limit and constrain the way in which you think. And the fifth consideration is structured chaos. So typically I will say that big tech companies are chaotic, they are complex, things are constantly moving and changing, but there is structure to it. Things are kind of laid out in a way in which you know how to do something or you know how to navigate something. But there's still chaos within that. You have a network of people to go and ask how to do something. You can probably look back and see how a situation was handled or navigated by someone else in a similar position to you. And the chaos often comes from, I think, the politics of just being a big company more than anything else. And if you flip that to startup life, it is actually just pure chaos. (laughs) pure chaos because you are focused purely on survival and that means you're very in tune with actually what is just happening in the market there is really no time for internal politics and internal bullshit which kind of exists everywhere but it's a different kind of chaos and it's also chaotic because you are so resource constrained and budget and time constrained and if you are the only product person then You are in a chaos of your own because you are really trying to do it all. The chaos in a startup also comes from acting kind of like you're in a speedboat. You have to move fast. You don't have time to take weeks and weeks and weeks to make decisions because you need to make a decision and get real-time feedback so you can pivot faster than a big tech company could make a decision a hundred times over. So this again comes down to what do you enjoy and like what do you thrive in? Do you need that structure? Because the reality of product work is that it is somewhat chaotic by nature. It is very fast moving and you need to be very adaptable and on your game to deal with challenges and make a bunch of decisions all the time, every single day. But can you deal with that chaos while everything around you is also super chaotic? And can you do that when you're probably quite chaotic if you're the only product person? So I think it really just comes down to how you like to work, how your mind works, how you like to structure your days. Do you like taking your time to make a decision? Do you like documenting things or do you like coming up with an idea, running it past a couple of people and saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's figure it out as we go. So think about how you like to work. And again, I would say try both. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, I really do appreciate it. You may have noticed that I was fairly neutral throughout my various considerations and sharing of experience in working in big tech. I think ultimately Every situation has its pros and cons and there are some immense pros to working in big tech and there are some really big cons to working in big tech. So I think it really is about thinking of everything as a consideration rather than a really big pro or con and ultimately focus on building a varied and broad and interesting product portfolio career which will really take the pressure off you finding the best next move that you can make because it's another 
learning and another experience and hopefully another set of skills that you can add to your portfolio. But I wish you all the best in your product career, whether you are going down the big tech route or the startup route, if you are just starting, if you are experienced, whatever challenge situation you are facing right now, think of it all as a learning to contribute to your overarching career portfolio. And yeah, thanks so much for watching again, and I will see you in my next video.